screen is very dark. The uh, window is very dark. And the uh, window needs to be blacked out. Right? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this morning, and thank you so much for the opportunity we have to come before you right now and praise you and lift you up and glorify your name, Jesus. So we take this time and we focus our eyes on you, God, and give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Where's that video camera? Huh? The video camera. Where's that? Oh.
where would we be without you, Lord? You Thank make you. us brave. You calm the stormy seas. You allow us to walk on the water, God. So we walk towards you, Jesus. We run towards you, God. We run on that water. We run towards you in faith, knowing that you provide us everything that we need, Jesus. Let us rest in your embrace, God. Thank you so much. 
right, now we're going to go into uh, a time of offerings. Um, we're going to collect our tithes and offerings. And so this is just a continuation of what worship is. Um, so we worship God with our time, with our energy, with our voices. And we're also able to worship Him with our finances and trusting that He's going to provide for us. So um, let's pray over this time. Dear Lord, thank you so much. Um, for this time that we get to worship you, to gather together, to come in your name, Jesus. And I just pray that um, as we sacrifice uh, our finances, Lord, to you, that we would trust in you um, with everything, with our whole lives, with our future, with everything. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
in love for us, God. Wherever we're at, whatever is happening, Jesus, and that there is no fear. There's only freedom in your name. There's no condemnation, but there's only grace in your name, Jesus. So God, we thank you for these things and how much you've blessed us. And we've offered your son as a sacrifice for us. That should be the last song. So that we can live with you. We can have hope for the future. There's a prayer. In Jesus' name, everyone said, You're just saying ocean, so. What is on? Right, okay, you're, you're 
right place. We're going to go over these things. We're going to look at what the Bible says about it um, and how to overcome those things through the Word of God. All right, a little quiz for you, and you can just answer it in your own head. What do you have a hard time controlling? I put there in your notes just some, some options. Your temper? Uh, you know, is, it, is it anger? Is it your mood? Is it eating? Is it spending? Is it the Padres? So, <laughs> um, is it, you know, what is it you have a hard time just, you know, getting a grasp of? Um, the Apostle Paul mentions this. The Apostle Paul basically says, and this is the title of today's message, right? Why do I do that? <laughs> Why do I do what I don't want to do? Why do I do that? You ever say that to yourself? Why did I do that, right? So it's like, ah, oh, I don't want to do that. When we look at this, and Paul talks about it, today I want us to look at three things. Okay, we're going to look at the problem. We're going to look at the problem head on. Okay, we're going to see it, and we're going to understand it. This is the problem. Okay, we're going to look at that. And then we're going to look at God's promise. We're going to see what does God's word say about it. What is his promise to us who struggle with these things? Okay, and then I'm going to give you the prescription. It's going to be ABCD. It's going to be the very clear prescription. And it's not always easy. Taking medicine isn't always easy, is it? It doesn't taste good all the time. But here's the thing. Sometimes you've got to take it in order to get better. This is going to be medicine for your soul. So number one, I want you to write this down. Here's the problem. Here's the reality. My sin nature. You have a sin nature. Everybody say sin. sin. <laughs> you have a sin nature. That's the problem. Okay? Um, why is it that I do what I don't want to do? Well, because of sin. That's, that's why. And it's not very popular to talk about today. Sin. But it's a reality. It's a reality. The Bible says real simply. All right? It's my sin nature. Romans 7, 15, and then 17 and 18. This is the main section we're going to break down today. Look what he says. He's the Apostle Paul. I don't understand myself at all. For I really want to do what is right. But look what he says. I don't do it. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. And then he goes, I, I can't help myself because it is sin inside me that makes me do these evil things. And he goes, look, I'm, I know I'm rotten so far as my old sinful nature is concerned. No matter which way I turn, I can't make myself do right. And read that last part with me. I want to, but I can't. Right? There's, there's a common feeling, right? We all have that. And I want to do what's right, but I can't. What's the deal, right? So we can all relate to that. There's this wrestling match that's going on inside every one of us. Wrestle with this stuff, man. We can wrestle. And look at what it says in Romans 7, 17. It says, I have the desire. Everybody say desire. Desire. Yeah, we all have the desire to change. We have the desire to do good. But look what he says next. But not the what? There's the difference. So many of us have the desire to change. We have the desire to do right, to do better, to do something different. But man, we, we, uh, we're missing the power. We're missing the power. So we're going to talk about that, okay? Uh, let me ask you this question. Have you ever tried to break a bad habit? Yeah. It lasts like for a week, maybe, uh, or a couple weeks, maybe, when you're trying. But over time, you're back to doing what you used to do all along. It's like Paul, you know, he said, man, I like to change, but I can't. Let me ask you this question. How many of you made resolutions this year, January? Raise your hand. Like, if you guys don't want to raise your hand, because like, I know what you're going to say next. <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask. Did you keep them? No, right? People don't keep them. 99% of people don't keep them. The 1% are very strange people. Right? No, but we don't, we don't keep them. Right? Because we start, we try, and we fail. Here, here's why. Good intentions are just not good enough. You can have great intentions. But that doesn't solve it. Good resolutions aren't even good enough. It takes more than simply a desire to change. A desire that I want to change and I really want to change. Okay, for the camera three. That's a start. But since everybody deals with the sin struggle, this wrestling match that Paul's talking about, the results are very predictable. Three results of all experience. These three. Number one, I'll try to Confusion. First result of the wrestling match is confusion. Romans 7 15, Paul says, I don't understand myself at all. For I really want to do what's right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. Why do we keep making the same mistake over and over? Because it's 
confusion. We get confused when we keep making the same mistake. It leads to the second thing, which is frustration. Confusion always leads to frustration. You're confused on something, you get frustrated. <coughs> Yesterday, I was putting up one of those plastic sheds, which I don't know why I created those. <laughs> <laughs> but I was putting up one of those plastic sheds. I was removing it from an area in my yard to another area in the yard, which is a mistake, by the way, because plastic sheds warp over time. <laughs> Cheap, so you get it right. So I, I was putting together this plastic shed, and there's this one area that would not go together, no matter what. I did, I did everything right, and it's just one area. It's just supposed to click in. It's just supposed to click in. It's just supposed to click in. You ever do that? You work on something like, why won't it click in? It just won't click in, and then of course it starts raining. So then I'm thinking. It's leaking through because I can see sunlight through it, down rain, and it's like, what is going on with this thing? So the confusion of realizing I'm missing something led to frustration. I started to get really frustrated, and I was going to punch the wall. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's okay, this is plastic, it won't hurt, you know? And I didn't, I didn't punch the wall, I just got frustrated. Romans seven eighteen. no matter which way I turn, I can't make myself feel right. I want to, but I can't. It just leads to this frustrating feeling. How many of you have started out really, really good? Let's say it's a diet, right? Because that's a common everyone. You started out with a diet one day, and you just that day, I'm going to eat better. I'm going to do good today. I'm going to make it. I'm going to start to day one. And by the end of the day, you had a balanced diet, right? And you come home with a pizza in each hand. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're balanced. That's what happened, right? It's like, what is going on? Why can't we beat this thing? Right? There's a problem. You're saying a lot of people, they'll go to self-help books. Okay? And here's, here's the thing about self-help books. There's actually some good principles in some of those self-help books, good principles. Whereas you can see some things that say, yeah, if I do that, you know, that will probably work, that will help. And it's true, but it doesn't last. Because you're missing the power that gives you the opportunity to really change. You can willpower something for a little while. The lasting change only comes when you have power. We'll talk about that power. But without a doubt, confusion leads to frustration, which leads to the third thing, which is discouragement. Hear the discouragement in Paul's voice in Romans 7.24. He says, I've tried everything and nothing helps. I'm at the end of my rope. Is there no one who can do anything for me? He's setting us up. Right? He's setting us up. But you can hear the discouragement. He says, I'm at the end of my rope. My life's a mess. I'm a failure. Why even try? I'm just going to throw in the towel on this wrestling match. You win. I'm never going to be able to change. All of us have felt that frustration of the wrestling match inside us, the good, the bad, and here's the good news. There is a way out. Right, yes, there is a way out. We're going to look at that, okay? Here's the second thing we're going So we know what the problem is, sin. Secondly, the promise. Okay, here's the promise. Personal freedom. God's promise that you can have personal freedom. You feel like you're bound up? You feel like this thing's got you in a, in a headlock? No. God promises personal freedom. John 8, 32, Jesus said, When you know the truth, read with me, the truth will set you free. Yes. See, God's promise. He said it. When you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So, the secret to personal change is not willpower. It's not a pill. It's not even a resolution or a vow. Listen, it's not even something you do. It's not even something you say. It's something you know. It's something you know. The secret to personal change and personal freedom is you know the truth. Listen, I've said this a lot. You've been around. When you change the way you think, it all starts here. This is where it starts. When you change the way you think, it changes the way you feel. And then it changes the way you act. It all matters right here. It starts here in the cabeza. All right? It's one of the most important things. It's one of the most important things I'm going to say today is this next thing. Okay? And, and I still want you to stay for the rest of the message. 